Hey, this is BJ. Thanks for listening to our show's podcast. If you're a fan of all things geeky, you should check out my other podcast, BJ Shea's Geek Nation. We have new episodes every day, and you can check it out at BJGeekNation.com. Your home is going into foreclosure, and you feel like a financial wreck. You don't know where to turn for accurate information. I'm bankruptcy attorney Travis Gagné. Let's talk about some legal options. If we work quickly, we can propose a plan to save your home, modify the loan, or in many cases, even eliminate your second mortgage. The consultation is free. I've helped hundreds of people just like you make informed decisions about whether to save their home or exit it on a reasonable, organized timeline. The chapter you choose sets the tone for the next chapter of your life. Please contact me today at ChooseTheRightChapter.com. That's ChooseTheRightChapter.com. 99.9 KISW, The Rock of Seattle. In the rock shop, brand new. It's the BJ and Migs Rock Socks, baby. Oh, yeah. Up your socks game. Don't be like Steve. You look awesome with those socks. <laughs> well, I'm going to get a pair. Yeah, well, finally. Finally, you'll have a sock game. Maybe this will be the gateway drug to other socks for me. Oh, if you go like you do with T-shirts, forget it. It's all over. You know what? Yeah. I don't know. if I, I'd have to buy a bigger house. Yeah, you would. <laughs> well, make sure you make room for the BJ Mix Rock Socks. These are awesome. Check them out now at KISW.com. Let's play B. Nice. You know what? We were talking about those impossible meat burgers, the Whoppers and stuff. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Do you think about doing an impossible meat taco? You could. Why not? That'd be interesting. Well, I know the Field Roast uh, brand. (laughs) Gosh, I'm so plant-based, man. (laughs) Uh, They do do ground beef. Yeah, really? We've done tacos and um, uh, nachos. Okay. (laughs) Yes. That's what you do after you have the nachos. Yes. Okay. Yeah. I'd be down for those. Yeah. 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 So you can do that. That sounds fun. Like, I'm actually kind of into the impossible meat. I, I think I want to try it. You've tried it, right? Or you haven't? I haven't. No, it's interesting to me, it. though. They have it at the Ram. Oh, they do? Yeah, because we went it. to the Ram for lunch yesterday. The white nice. ski got the uh, impossible burger there. Oh, oh so did you Ram. try it? Yeah, I took a bite of it. It's and? freaking great. So what, how does it compare to Beyond Meat? I like the Beyond Meat better, but it's really good. Okay. Yeah. Nice. Uh, i got to try me a Beyond Meat. i got to find that somewhere. I went with chicken and avocado. Nice. nice. That's the carnivore that I am. Yeah. <laughs> do it. <laughs> Let's get to our contestant today. We got Corey and Roy to take on Steve. Corey, are you there? Yes, I am. Excellent. What's he playing for today, Steve? Playing for tickets to check out Clutch and the Dropkick Murphys over at the nice. Wamu Theater on October 15th. <laughs> Go to KISW.com for all the details. If you want to see him, get your tickets now. Ticketmaster.com. All right, Steve, get out of here. For those playing it at home, Corey will have 60 seconds to answer 10 questions. Corey, you can pass all you want, but you will only get three guesses per question. Are you ready? Yes. What soft drink introduced in 1982 was the number three U.S. seller within two years? Sprite? No. Pepsi? No. Dr. Pepper? No. In what decade did the Soviet Union launch its first Sputnik satellite? The 50s? Yes. What kind of animal is Horton and Horton Hears a Who? Uh, elephant. Yes. Who was the main actor in the 2014 action movie The Equalizer? Uh, Denzel Washington. Yes. How many candles are on a menorah? Seven. No. Ten. No. Twelve. No. What state was former pro wrestler Jesse Ventura governor of? Florida. No. California. No. Pass. Which which chess piece can only move diagonally? Uh, the rook? No. The knight? No. And uh, no. three correct. Oh. Not a great turnout there. Well, what are you going to do? Well, uh, not answer the questions correctly. Yeah, that's, what that's it. Well, I mean, there's uh, yeah. good showing, Corey. Uh, mm. <laughs> I mean, oh, well. yeah. he tried. 
That's it. He tried. He made an attempt. He did. He attempted to answer questions. Hi, Steve. How are you doing? Super. Yeah, I'm, you're going to do super in about three uh, are you sure? seconds. Yeah, I'm sure. All right. Well, it's probably a tough better. day for Steve. You never know. It could be. We don't know. Steve, are you ready? Yeah. <laughs> Thanks. What soft drink introduced in 1982 was the number three U.S. seller within two years? Uh, Pepsi. No. Mountain Dew. No. Coca-Cola. No. In what? Right? No. Mm. In what decade did the Soviet Union launch its first Sputnik satellite? The 80s. No. 70s. No. 90s. No. 60s. No. Son of a. What kind of animal is Horton in Horton Hears a Who? An owl. No. Yeah, oh, we he heard a who. Ah, oh, crap, a dog? No. Horton is a horse. No. <laughs> who was the main actor in the 2014 action movie, The Equalizer? Oh, uh, Denzel Washington. Yes. Nice. How many candles are on a menorah? 11. No. 12. No. 9. Yes. In nice. What state was former pro wrestler Jesse Ventura governor of? Minnesota. Yes. Minnesota. <laughs> Which chess piece can only move diagonally? Rook. No. Uh... A king. No. A queen. No. In which ocean is Guam located? Uh, Pacific Ocean. Yes. The Panama Canal first opened in what year between 1910 and 1920? 1918. No. One, oh. two, three, four. Steve, yeah. you win. Yeah. Four to three. Yeah, that's right. Uh, that's the game. Yeah, I didn't think Roy really. I thought Roy had a shot. Well, Corey. Yeah. Yeah, him too. Corey's in Roy. <laughs> now get out of Roy, Corey. He doesn't like it. You know, yeah, I guess they were harder than I thought they would be. Yeah. And it was just because you got two more questions and got to the Guam one. Yeah. Boom. Boom. Yeah. yeah. Boom. Drop it. <laughs> he knew that uh, the Soviets launched Sputnik in the 50s. Uh, he yeah. also knew that Horton was an elephant. Yeah, I thought I thought for sure when Steve was getting those wrong that maybe we had a shot. Yeah, exactly. Yeah, Steve cheated. Uh, there's two that you both missed. Uh, more by a- answering the question. Right. Oh yeah, that's so that's cheating now. So, so totally. totally. <laughs> uh, the chess piece that can only move diagonally. Vicky knows this. Oh, uh, queen. No, no, it's the bishop. Uh, yep, it's the bishop. Yeah, not the yeah. horsey. No, not no, the horsey. Not that's the, horsey. the knight, and that one's the one that moves in the L shape. Uh, yes. Mm-hmm. I don't play chess. Yeah, I can tell. Uh, the only other one that you guys missed, the soft drink that was introduced in '82 that became the number three seller in two years. Was it a diet drink? It is. That's what I thought. Is it tab? No. Diet Coke. Diet Coke. Wow. Yeah. 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 I only knew one person that ever drank tab. I did too, and he oh. drank it by the little two liter thing. Yeah, and exactly. It was little. Really pallets of the stuff. Then he had a little problem with his pee pee. Whoa! Oh, yeah. Really? You're not supposed to put it in there. Yeah, <laughs> I know. I, he liked to stir it. That's what it was. He didn't have a straw at the time. Ew! Yeah, All right, that's well, happening. Uh, congratulations, Steve. You won with four correct. Call then. number four. How about you checking out Clutch and Dropkick Murphys at the Wamu Theater? Call number four two zero six four two one Rock. And it's a quick update. I was wrong. It was not field roast. That makes the crumbled up beef meat. Who does? It's it's uh, field roast. I mean, it's uh, beyond meat. Good job, Johnny. Got corrected by the white ski. Yeah, there you go. Oh, at least she's listening. Yes. Yeah. Thanks for that update. Well, I just didn't want you goes, guys going to get the wrong yeah. stuff. Beyond like, Meat is the one you say is the best one. That's my favorite. And it's crumbled. And they also, they also make it crumbled up so they, yeah. you immediately can have a Beyond Meat taco. You got some of the barbecue, man. Yeah. The barbecue, then burgers. So, yeah, so, I had, so you and I both have the Impossible Burger mm-hmm. and you like Beyond Meat better. Yes. But you've had it at a restaurant or you can buy Beyond Meat at a store? Uh, both. Damn. Mm-hmm. Lunchbox right. Laboratory uses Beyond Meat. I, I got to go to Lunchbox Lab. Hell yeah, I mean, you do. Plus, there's a lot of great reasons to go to Lunchbox Lab, but that's, so that, that, that makes sense. They also use the Dork Burger, which is dork and duck and pork together, and it's delicious. Really? Oh, yeah. At the Lunchbox Laboratory? Yeah. Why am I so, not there right now? Wait, pork and duck? Yeah. yeah dork. It's how, so how cool, good. How cool is that? Dork Burger. Yeah. I'm I'm up for trying that. It's so good. Plus they so have good. Uh, the alcoholic shakes. Yeah, they do do that. Yeah, alcohol. I mean, do do. <laughs> yeah, so good. Well, since we're talking food, let's talk about Wendy's. They dropped the spicy chicken nuggets from their menu a few years ago. They're bringing them back, and we can thank Ooh. Chance the rapper for this. I Annie, saw this. Thank Chance. I'm so excited. See, I was pumped too to see that it's coming back. I clicked on the like button when I saw it online. You got to know you're a somebody when you can tweet out, you know, something like this. And he and Chance tweeted out, "Quote: Wendy's will bring back spicy nuggets at some point. Please, please, Lord, let it be today." And Wendy saw that and said, "Okay, they're going to do it." And they said they would. 
if two million people like their tweet, and of course the internet delivered. No, oh, I saw it and I instantly liked it. I was like, I'm absolutely on board for this because their spicy chicken nuggets are fantastic. I never understood why they took them away. They had the Cadillac of chicken nuggets. But I've noticed that a lot of places up here in the Pacific Northwest, they don't have a lot of spicy options. That's like, Yeah, maybe that's it. In, in Albuquerque, they have a, a hot and spicy at McDonald's, which is just like a chicken sandwich, but it's the spicy version. And they oh, don't have that here. But I would oh, totally disagree. It's not the Cadillac of chicken nuggets. Oh, wow. Wendy's okay. is not. What oh, is, no. well, okay. I'd shots maybe, fired. I'd put it maybe third. Even Ooh. the spicy chicken nuggets. Well, the spicy chicken nuggets are great, but I'm just saying chicken nuggets in general. Oh, okay. Would but you I, put who, Wendy's a number one? Yes. A oh, Wendy's number one? A number one in terms Ooh. of fast food chicken nuggets, for sure. I'm going Whoa. Chick-fil-A one. No. Ooh, I'm going boy. McDonald's two. Okay. Burger King three. Whoa. Then Wendy's. Wow. wow. Okay. Actually, Burger King has like a 10-piece chicken nugget, like a regular one's like a dollar. Yeah. And yep. then they have the spicy ones now, which are like, I think, a yep. dollar fifty, and they're fantastic. They charge a buck fifty for what? Throwing a little for spice, spice on there? Yeah. I know, but they're special. Uh, I will pay the 50 cents. Boy, I don't care. That's like, the, let's tell them half the cost just for the spice. So don't what's your care. number one? Is, is it Burger King? I think it's going to be Burger King. Burger King's a solid number one pick. Mm-hmm. Damn. Mm-hmm. Okay. I've never had Wendy's chicken nuggets, so I can't say. Oh, but have you had other chicken nuggets? I have. What would you put in your number one? <laughs> well, I, I put Mickey D's because I think they're the only ones I've had. And, and then maybe I've had Burger King. So... Um, I could put them at a number two, and I think that might be it. I don't know if I've, I mean, I go to B dubs. If I really want chicken nuggets, I'll just go get the boneless chicken. Just get the boneless ones? Yeah. (laughs) Yeah. Yeah. I mean, but they're not fast food, though. No, but they, they can't. They can't. But they're, they're so good. They are. Yeah, but yeah. they're not chicken wings. I'm glad that you considered them chicken nuggets. Yeah, you you, you, you had me turn the corner on that. I, I like to troll you and go that their chicken wings are just boneless. But of course, they're just chicken. How could you not? You guys have not had. I I, I can't give you crap about it because it was D. Ted Smith that got me hooked on the Chick Fil A chicken nuggets. But their chicken nuggets are amazing. Oh no, I've had them. I just don't like them. Did we? we so we when we went to Chick Fil A, like the worst probably. <laughs> we never got them. Last. What? Did we, when we went to Chick Fil A that one time, we never got them. Apparently, no. oh that's a bummer why didn't we think of doing that we didn't know that these were that great at the time i had a whole chicken sandwich isn't that just a chicken nugget but like one big chicken nugget (laughs) yes i feel like i feel like i've had it i really like that what about you rev uh mcdonald's it's the old standby yep like it's just the one that i've always loved and so that's the one that i'll always go to any other ones i just kind of don't even bother with and their sweet and sour is the best hot mustard Mm. okay buffalo Wow. Really? I don't understand. Nobody can agree on anything in this room. Actually, I mix buffalo and barbecue, and it's legit. Yeah, but you like the spicy stuff. I do like the spicy stuff. Yeah, see, that's the thing. I'm I'm a lame Pacific Northwesterner who doesn't want spice. Mm -hmm. Yeah, Ketchup's too spicy for you. It is. (laughs) Don't put it on there. I burn. It's time for Listeners on the Loose. This is where you get to pick the topic. You get to guide the show at 206-421-ROCK. Text us at 77999. Whatever you want to talk about, we got your calls, your texts at 917 on The Rock. BJ and Migs, mornings on The Rock, 99.9 KISW. 99.9 KISW, The Rock of Seattle. It's listeners on the loose. You pick the topic, you guide the show. 206 421 Rock. Text us at 77999. Talk about whatever you want, but when you are talking, you better follow Steve's rule. Let's just show some energy and bring it. Otherwise, we'll have to come here and then say goodbye. Goodbye, old friend. Just like that. 206 421 Rock. Text us at 77999. Someone texted BJ, did you see the kid that flipped off the reporter? I thought it was hilarious. Yeah, we've got this up on the BJ and Migs page of KISW.com. You've got to check it out. An Australian news team was covering the royal baby in the UK because that was big news. I know. I kept getting phone alerts about this. I'm like, why am I even getting these? Uh, the type of babies being born. It's like, amazing that people still care about like the royalty and to me, such an antiquated process that we have princes and princesses and all that, but we do. Yeah. And people care and I don't care. I mean, I'm happy they had a kid. But what do I give a damn? I, yeah, but it's like I kept getting these Daily Mail and other news yeah. agencies sending me these blasts. And at first I'm like, who the hell is this Megan chick? And why do we care if she's having a baby? And I forgot that that's her name. Yeah, that's her name. Yeah. Uh, she's a, is she a duchess or a deutsches or something? I forget what she is. I was painting my asses. So yeah, that's what she is. Yeah, the phone kept going off yesterday. Well, the cool part of all this, though, is that because these people were there from Australia covering it, they were doing, you know, the, the, the video reports. Uh behind the reporter as she's doing this report this little kid in a car flips her off and there's nothing i think more adorable than a little kid flipping somebody off we have, i think it's one of the things you teach your kid to do if you're really a bad parent which i, I might have done a couple times plus the kid's uh, like a drive-by bird 
uh, flipping. Like, yeah. The car just kind of shows up behind her, and the kid's just like, yay! Number one. Yeah, we've got the uh, video for you to see on the BJ Miggs page of KISW.com. Here's how it went down. Speaking of bad parenting, how about that little kid that pulled up behind me before? What little rotter stuck up his little middle finger. There you go. The mean streets of Windsor on the middle of that a is... public holiday bank weekend here in the UK. <laughs> Wait till I get my hands on him. What a little rotter. All right, she called like a little kid, like a little he bastard. Was so proud. It's the best video ever. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. And she's, uh, yeah. I mean, I, I like her response. I'm not too sure what an American journalist would have said, but I like her response. She's like, when I get my hands on Ema, that little rotta. It depends on where. Probably if it's Boston, the, the reporter would turn around and curse him out. Yeah. Yeah, you might be right. That's awesome. Check out the video on the BJ Miggs page of KISW.com. 206 421 Rock. Text us at 77999. Let's go to Justin in Ferndale. Justin, you are on the Rock. Hey, morning, guys. How morning, you doing? Morning, Justin. Welcome to the show. What you got, buddy? So, yesterday, you guys were talking about uh, the uh, top inventions that kind of like changed our, our lives. And you guys said there was no food items. Well, it was top invention in the last 25 years. And on the list was uh, the number one on the list was Wi Fi, but it was yep. in the last 25 years the top inventions. Yeah. Yeah. And, and you were saying that there was uh, no food items made the top 10. So, my question is if you guys had to make a top 10 of food items that changed your life, what would they be? I know my top two would be the air fryer and the Instapot. Oh, the man. air fryer is definitely up there. Man. I love our Instant Pot. It's so mm. easy to make stuff. Yeah, microwave oven. I mean, it's oh, made, yeah. yeah the, well, for me, though, because I don't know how to cook. And when I was younger, uh, and I appreciate the call, Justin. When I was younger, my mom passed away. My dad did not cook. And we, we just had crap. And then eventually, when the microwave came out, you didn't have to wait 20, 30, 40 mm. minutes to get frozen food thought out. And it just it changed everything. Yeah, that's a good call. Yeah. I, mean, uh, that's why I like, still like toast, so the toaster oven's pretty sweet. The toaster <laughs> oven. And, yeah. The popcorn <laughs> popper, though, to yeah. me, is the best All right. kitchen appliance. Really? Uh, do but, you use an automatic, like an electrical? Uh, yeah. What do you mean? Uh, like, yeah, when a you popper? plug in. Yeah, yeah, a yeah. popper. Yeah, yeah. Because yeah. oh. they have the ones where you can put it on the stove. You put the uh, the kernels in with butter, and you just kind of shake I've it. I've done that. Oh, yeah. We have a Whirly Pop, which is amazing. Oh, Whirly Pop. You're right, dude. That is a great invention if you want to be that guy that wants to cook on the stove. What the hell is a Whirly Pop? You don't know a Whirly Pop? <laughs> oh, Steve, your life's about to change. I'm, I'm sure they yeah. got him at Bed Bath & Beyond. I think that's where we got ours. That's yeah, kind of like what I was talking about. Yeah, it's like a pot that you put this, oh, yeah. Yeah, the things in, and then you just you spin it around, and it whirls around, and then it makes But that's the only thing you use it for. It yeah. is, it's made just for making popcorn. That's it? funny, because I'll sometimes do it with just a, like a pan or, yeah. or a pot, and then just put a little oil in there, popcorn kernels, and just kind of shake it. Yeah, I won't do that. No? So do you have different types of popcorn-making apparatuses? Well, we have microwave bags. Uh-huh. We have the regular popcorn popper, <laughs> uh, the pot that I can mm-hmm. do it with that way, or just like a bag of popcorn. So I have many options of popcorn. I eat popcorn every night, practically. Really? Well, all right, then that's wow. a big thing for you. Then yeah. that is a big invention. That makes sense. Yeah. My dad's the same way with popcorn, but we have like the air popper, and we I, we bought him like the big fancy, it's like a tabletop one, but like the movie theater style yeah. ones. Yeah. Uh, he has that. He's got one of the, the little whirly pop. He's got everything. What does he do? Microwave. That's good. Go-to, I know, but it's just like, you have like five devices and you Quicker buy a microwave. Easier. Well, you never yeah. asked him if he wanted no, to he use did. those devices. Oh, he, he bought did. some of those, yeah. Oh, he did? Well, he's yeah, crazy. See, exactly. I, 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 the the microwave does all of it. Yeah, I want the one that looks like the Stanley Cup. Have you seen that popcorn pop? No. <laughs> and the cup part is the bowl. Oh, that's, that's cool. Amazing. Yeah. If I ever have like a man cave type setup, I that's would That's the way that. to go. Yeah. Yeah. Someone says air fryer is life. Our oven went out, so it saved our lives. Yeah, air fryer. Well, I, I see that involves cooking. Yeah, yeah. So I wasn't sure if we was talking about the the, the device. Awesome? She's looking oh, at the Stanley Cup popper. It. Oh yeah, I want she, it. She'll BJ the pop. All right, let's see. It looks that thing cool. is cool. It does look really good. Yeah, nice. Do it. Let's do it. How much is it? Sixty five ninety nine. Sixty five ninety nine. Free shipping. Free shipping. Right. It's like it. you're getting it for free then. Huh? Of course. Yeah. It's like, yeah, you're absolutely right. <laughs> you get it Monday from Walmart. That thing that, that that costs sixty five dollars, sixty six bucks. Yeah. Well, I mean, look oh, okay. It. It's shiny. Well, I mean, a, a popcorn popper is like thirty bucks anyway. Yeah. It's, it's easy to clean. Yeah. I'll it's easy by. to clean. About I'll as go. fast as a microwave. It's about as fast. as I don't want to. Hot air, which is healthy. Not doing it. I'm gonna go get my skinny pop. Get my boom chicken pop. Oh, oil needed. So he says, yeah. be careful. So did you hear about the guy that got popcorn lung from too much popcorn? What, what the hell is this? I don't know about this. Because I like I, I eat a lot of popcorn too. Oh, this is get, bothering me. How now. do you get popcorn lung? You like you're inhaling the kernels, I guess? 
Must be. I While don't you're know. Eating it, you must be inhaling some kernel. Popcorn dust. lung is the nickname for bronchitis something or other. It's a condition that damages your lungs, small airways, and makes you cough. Uh, other chemical, but does what does it do to oh. you? Well, apparently, microwave popcorn. Uh, yeah, it can cause that. Like a lot of their flavoring, depe- uh, can mess up the rest. So of the air pop's fine though. Yeah, it's oh, saying mo- microwave popcorn danger. Yeah, you're right. good. I can live without the microwave popcorn. Yeah, I don't do microwave popcorn. Okay, good. Whoo! Well, we saved that one. Jeremy, man. Yeah. <laughs> Listeners on the loose. Do it at night. You pick the topic, you guide the show. 206 421 Rock. Text us at 77999. Uh, someone texted yesterday, you guys were talking about the whole Starbucks Cup at the Game of Thrones thing. I was reading that Starbucks made about 11 or saved $11 million in advertising costs for that, that flub. Isn't that amazing that having it show up just like that would have been worth $11 million had they wanted to? And the best part is, what I'm reading is it wasn't even a Starbucks Cup. No. It was oh. just a cup of coffee with that with oh. the plastic lid on it. Probably the catering services. Yeah. But everyone yeah. sees that and instantly thought Starbucks. So they got they didn't even buy a Starbucks and they got all that free advertising. Boy, that just goes to show you Starbucks is in our life, man. And I it mean, is now digitally removed. So if you go back and watch it, it's not there it's anymore. It's not there anymore. Mm, they digitally removed oh, it. Ah, dang it. Just think they could have done that what? so long ago and maybe not had this whole thing happen. Well, if they had noticed it, you don't. Yeah. You, do you? I well, if, since it's not a Starbucks cup, I, I now don't think it's a conspiracy anymore. I really thought it was a conspiracy that they were just basically giving. Starbucks. You really, you actually believe that it was a conspiracy instead I of did. Just someone being lazy and forgetting and yeah. I mean, nobody noticing. Somebody else pointed out there was another episode I think early on where Jamie Lannister is actually holding a cup of coffee and he's kind of hiding it in his hand. You can see it. It definitely is a cup of coffee. What? Oh, whoa! Yeah. So it's not the first time a cup of coffee's popped up in a Game of Thrones. That is, is clearly not Starbucks show? though. They need their coffee, man. They're working see, hard. See, they must have thought. See, they don't think people are going to blow stuff up. They probably figured like a normal camera shot would not catch it. Um, I just know that watching a lot of Blu-ray high def reproductions of my old shows, and you realize what they let fly because of standard definition television. They figure would never pick it up. Never believing that in the future we would have higher definition to pick up the higher quality of film yep. they filmed on. Mm-hmm. And you see a lot of stuff that you really didn't see on the regular TV back in the day. If I'm Game of Thrones, I know they only have a couple. Se- what a couple episodes left that's it yeah. they should they should just go you know all out like put like a Mountain Dew can in there maybe one of the guys is like on a, a Microsoft Surface while he's planning to kill a dragon yeah just just throw yeah, product put, placement put, put in everything there. in there yeah, yeah. Yeah, I mean, and HBO did they actually did release that statement, and it was from Craft Services. It wasn't a Starbucks cup. Eleven point six million bucks in free advertising because everybody thought it was Starbucks. That's just nuts. We had a topic earlier about I can't believe my friend did blank, and uh, someone says back in the early two thousands, my friends and I we went to Whistler, had a crazy night at the Boot Pub, which is a strip club. Oh, the Boot Pub. In Whistler. Yep. Okay. Uh, we ordered mental note. Uh, we ordered shots of Jaeger, <laughs> but realized that the waitress shorted us one shot. So instead of ordering another shot for one of our friends of ours, who we always make fun of, we ended up taking another empty shot glass and filling it with vinegar. The only thing that my buddy said after taking that shot was, I think the Jaeger went bad. Oh. 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 I mean, now people are drinking that Dang. vinegar for health reasons. So. Yeah, I suppose you got a good point there. You, you, you helped the guy out. Different kind. But. It's probably healthy now. Damn, dude. Ah, see, I, that's why I can't trust any of you. I don't know if I... I, I, I don't would do that to you. I don't know about this bachelor party idea much. anymore. You would complain way too much. I if would. We, if, we, if we screwed with your drink, it wouldn't be worth the laugh that we would get at first. You're right. Because you would not let it go. You I wouldn't would let it go. never let it go. Oh. Think about... Ever. When we went to that radio convention, where is it, in Charlotte, when somebody pranked you? Yeah. And that God, became... Yeah. That, that... You did not let that go no, the entire weekend. I was so pissed. You were in a bad mood, and you wouldn't even, like, accept that somebody pranked you. You just kept yelling and screaming about it. Yeah, I was so mad. Yeah. Yeah. So yeah. it wouldn't be fun pranking you. Good. I'm glad that you... As long pranking as you, guys, you, you gotta have the right person to prank. Yeah, you, yeah, good. I'm glad I'm not the right person because I hate pre- I hate being pranked. No, you don't let yeah. it go. No. Ever. Do remember that, Danny. Let anything go? No. No. Remember mm-hmm. that, people. Mm-hmm. Just remember that. Don't prank I think me. anyone else on the show, I, I wouldn't have a problem pranking. Yeah. Actually, I think I, I'm right there with you. I wouldn't prank BJ just because it's not worth it. Don't do it. Headache. Yeah, don't yeah. do it. Good I wouldn't break Rev either because I feel like he would just get me back in flatulence for the rest of my life. Oh, he would. Oh, oh yeah, yeah, pretty much. Yeah. No, yeah. I'm good without doing that. Mm-hmm. I worry about Sarah only when she's drunk. Yeah. She might be like, be like stab me with a fork and be like, remember that time that you yeah. put a whoopee cushion on my seat? <laughs> yeah. Dude, I feel like her, her stabbing you with a fork would be her going easy on you. Yes. Yeah. No. Be careful. Apple doesn't fall too far from that tree. Yeah, yeah right. Crazy bitches. We had a yeah. text message from someone who lives in New Mexico. 
Yeah? He said, I'm from New Mexico. Dion sucks. Oh, <laughs> nice. <laughs> Finally yeah, the truth. Yeah, yeah, I replied to them. Finally the truth. Yeah, right. they, they're they they're from a different part of New Mexico, so I can't trust their word. The good the part. part. Yeah, yeah, <laughs> yeah the, where, where all the smart people are. Yeah, sure. It's Listeners on the Loose. You pick the topic. You guide the show. 206-421-ROCK. Text us at 77999. More of your calls and texts at 933 on The Rock. BJ and Migs. Mornings on The Rock. 99.9 KISW. 99.9 KISW. The Rock of Seattle. It's Listeners on the Loose. You pick the topic. You guide the show. 206 421 Rock. Text us at 77999. Uh, we are getting a lot of text messages now wondering what was the prank on BJ that caused him to have his weekend ruined in Charlotte? How did BJ get pranked in Charlotte? I want to know what destroyed BJ's weekend. Oh, that was not a good time. Please tell us. That was not a good time. That's when I was banned from having Diet Coke. Yeah, we blamed it. That was a time that what? one of the main muckety mucks at Entercom reported back to our boss here and said, Yeah, everything was going good until BJ proverbially pooped in the punch bowl yeah whoa yeah it happened it was me vicky and bj yeah. that went to this one yeah and it all started with a late night phone call yeah i, I, I was uh I, I was woken up i think it was actually early in the morning because okay. it's a morning show that's right early morning phone call yeah so somebody woke me up at the hotel room at this, this convention we were at which was it was like a, it was like a radio convention and it was a radio show who knew who I was. They somehow got to my room and woke me out of bed and started just asking me all sorts of really stupid questions and uh, pranking. The, and they were just pranking the hell out of me. And I didn't. And, and it was like, what the hell is going on? I was I, I was literally asleep. And I was pissed. I'm like, okay, so you're in our business. You're putting me live on the air against the law because you're not supposed to do that. And oh, it irritated me the whole time. And. There happened to be a couple of dudes there that, that they were famous for doing that kind of stuff. I like to call them the Beavis and Butthead of morning radio. Yeah. And, and you know I, who they are, Danny. Yeah. And, I and, sure I do. And it was their, that was their thing that they used to like to do. They would call other radio shows and put them on and prank them like that. And um, it would irritate the crap out of me. Very, very. Because that's just not the kind of radio I, I like to do. Plus, you're, you know, you're, you're bothering people in your own group. And also, they were dumb enough they didn't know I'm me. Yeah, okay. Yeah. Now, and, and, and then it just translated to the convention. Anytime anyone said anything that went against what BJ was saying, he goes, I'm just, I'm going to let them know. Yeah, and then I was just so angry. <laughs> grabbed the microphone and just destroying people. It got to the point where there was like a big get together, like a dinner thing. And we didn't get invited. We didn't get invited. <laughs> yeah, all so because of me. We're watching everybody get up and leave. <laughs> and I'm like, what's going on? And like one person from like uh, one of the Charlotte stations like stuck around with us for a little bit, but then bailed on us as well. Yeah. And I was supposed to go to a hockey game that night and I just knew okay I, I'm not leaving this situation because wow. I, I knew you were pissed and I was just like okay I'm just gonna oh, I didn't know you. I kicked you I got you out of a hockey game oh I'm sorry about that dude yeah I, I bailed on the hockey game because I felt oh, bad you man. were in such a bad mood I was like I'm not leaving my dude just to stew right and be pissed at everybody and I was so stuck mad with me so I appreciate you homie yeah yeah <laughs> I was like, I, yeah, that, that would, I wouldn't have felt right. I, and I was. I was, it was. I was angry. And then the intercom guy just saw me being mad like one of our mucky mucks. And he came back. Because I was mad at everybody and everything. And I hated everyone. Hated Except everybody. for us two. We were on no. your good side well, the whole good. time. On the plus side, we got... And we got drunk that night. So yeah, that a, sure, I still had yeah. fun. We got drunk and we went like an American Idol yes. contestant or winner or something. I she forget her name. Hot. She was blonde and yeah. really, really nice. And, and, and her boyfriend played for the Philadelphia Union. The something like soccer that, yeah. team. And he was cool as F. I think we met the band Sick too. Was, I was it Gwen? Excited. Was it? I, I want to thank Gwen because Gwen would yeah. have the Gwen had the job of having to be with us, and she was really kind. She was very, very nice. Yes, yeah. but what a rotten job! She didn't get to be with anybody because they didn't want me around. Well, she bailed on us eventually, and I think met up with. Okay, all of good them. for her. Yeah, but like she, she stuck with us long enough so that everyone else could get get out. Oh. Yeah, it was weird. It was, it was very, weird. very awkward. Did yeah. you when you called them out during like your rant and stuff? Did they say anything to you? Did well, they apologize. Nobody no. ever took ownership of the prank. Oh, no. interesting. Well, and I. I really, I piled on one of the dudes. And again, it wasn't them that did it. It was just they were like the kings of doing that. And somebody basically copied their bit. Oh, gotcha. And so, and so they were proud of that bit. And I was like, well, dude, I just got pranked by that. You're dumb bitch.
it, and it sucks when you're on the other end of it, you know, looking like a fool. Who wants to look like a fool? I hate it. See, I hate pranks, yeah. you know, and I hated looking like a fool, but I already had a chip on my shoulder. Sure. And, you know, I had a lot of caffeine, and then I realized I'm just miserable. <laughs> it was the most. It, it was horrible. <laughs> so I, many moments during yeah. that time. I was like, whoa, whoa. I had a lot whoa. of people. My buddy Bert and my buddy Paul Casanova came up to me at that time and said, what the hell is wrong with you? Because, I mean, I didn't, you know, I, I didn't know I was being that much of an idiot, and I was. Um, and I, but nobody seemed to care that it was a big deal, and that was what bothered me. It was like I'm, I, you know, because here's what I think in life: if somebody pranks you, there is, in other words, there's a little bit of a lack of respect. Like if you prank somebody and they're the odd man out, I looked at it to me like, oh, I guess I don't have a lot of respect because you wouldn't do this to Kid Craddock, you wouldn't do this to well, Scott he's Shannon. He's, he's dead. I mean, it's hard to do it to someone who's. You're not right. Alive. I suppose uh, you definitely you wouldn't do it if he was dead, would you? I Maybe mean, people would. You know, I, I mean, disagree. I, I don't know I if think- you'd do that to like a big time mucky muck guy would you I, I no i just i think when whenever i've been pranked i'm i'm always just like cool that person's comfortable enough to feel that they could prank me because we've we've gotten to that point like it, there are some maybe in certain situations no but the people know you right that prank you for yeah, the most part uh, of course they do see i don't know who these people were that's what pissed me but off. maybe they were gonna let you know but you were so angry that they were just like i'm not i'm not owning this because they thought well bj's gonna kill us well to this day nobody has ever owned it they're probably still scared of you see and i feel like that's sad i've got a few things that's happened in my life that look i hear you yeah where you know maybe i did i overreact yes but did it hurt me yeah and then to someone not to eventually apologize i think you know what you call me whatever you want but you're as big of a deuce that you're not man or woman enough to come and apologize for basically pissing me off yeah you know which a prank can do but for me, I, a lot of times within my world, like when someone pulls a prank on me, like I'll be like, all right, you got me. Now, just you know that eventually I'm going to get you back for it. And it's, it's kind of like a fun, lighthearted thing. But that's not me amongst my circle. Yeah, I, I'm not a prankable guy. I think it's because when I grew up, you know, as the adopted kid, I was always made fun of. I was always ex- I was always sure. the guy. You know, I was always pranked. I just hated it. It's like you know, I'm tired of being the you know basically the the whipping boy of everybody's group, and I was. And so this definitely brought back a lot of those memories. I guess it just depends. I mean, if you know that that circle of people, it's like no everybody's you know fair game. Then, but if you feel like you're the only person being pranked, I can understand where you're coming from. We just need to get you a shirt that says "I'm adopted." Don't prank me. Don't prank me. And re- Steve, I didn't recognize the people on the by. The by the way, who are doing it? I didn't recognize their voices. I'm not sure I know who these people are. We still don't know. Yeah, it's not. It, they, so they weren't my buddies. Wouldn't it be funny if it was me and Vicky? And oh, we that'd just, be so that would be amazing. <laughs> Please tell me Dude, it that was. would be the twist. The circle would be complete. I, I would wish. really be complete. No, I wish I would take ownership of it. If it was, I yeah. wish. There's no chance in hell I would get up early to prank you on a day where I didn't have to get up early. You know what would been great is if it wasn't even a radio show. It was just somebody like some random person making prank phone calls, and then well, it was it, it was a guy in a girl it sounded like a show oh. uh and by the way their show sucked and i was still being nice because i was like what is going on but they had a horrible show i mean it was I really, a bad prank well yeah it was like <laughs> i was like what are you guys doing and if i was more like my buddy wheeze in rochester i would have ripped them a new a-hole right on the air but i was like all right well, let me try to be as cool as i can be right but you know i'm like you guys are such douches and then you know you should have just done that yeah. that would have been fine i if really should have just ripped them apart for how bad this prank is yeah that would have been so awkward for them yeah next time i will i'm ready next time someone yeah. wants to prank me i am gonna rip their show to shreds so i'm gonna so steve uh, just uh, fess up to pranking bj lol yeah. and it wasn't me because i was new i was yeah, nearly 21 i wasn't yeah. about to start any crap i was too new for that now i might but i've changed though because i've realized that you know i did treat everybody miserably and they didn't do anything even the two dudes that i was mad at yeah they didn't they're actually good dudes they didn't do anything they weren't the ones that did it he took it out on them. I did. I did. Oh, I did. You did Although my favorite thing from that moment on, whenever anyone's like, oh, where are you from? What show are you on? And I say, I work with BJ. Everyone kind of gives me that, like, step away. Yeah. Sorry it's like, that. okay, see ya. I think it's changing, isn't it, a little bit? It's, it's getting better. Oh, gosh, yeah. It's gotten way better. I think it's changed a little bit. I've been working real hard to, like, be a nice guy. No, you're good now. Now who makes it awkward is Vicky, who just tells a story about selling her underwear, and everyone judges her. <laughs> you're like, bitches, don't kill my vibe. 
I do remember like one of the first conventions I went with you, and you were it, it was still in your you were still in like attack mode. Oh god! I mean, yeah. he would like just look for any reason to it. Yeah, I walked away from like so many other shows offered me business cards. Like, hey, let us know if you want to stop working with BJ. You seem <laughs> like if you could put up with him, yeah, you're our guy. And I'm just like, no, nah, I'm good, I'm good. But it was so it was so funny. Like, I had a line of See dudes, that? yeah, offering me jobs. I made you look good, didn't I? Yeah, and they're like with this guy can put up with this guy, he must have the patience of a saint. Yeah. One of my favorite interactions at one of these conventions, it was like, oh, who do you work for? BJ Shea. And they just go, ooh. <laughs> <laughs> really? And I was like, yeah. And they're like, how was? It? How is it? And I was like, oh, no, he's a great guy. Don't worry about it. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> and then you're yelling at people on like the women's forum. <laughs> oh, my God. Yeah. Throw like, the twice I thought, Come back to me when you've been hanging by your pubes for a radio bit. <laughs> I'm like, well, what have any of us been hanging by our pubes for a radio bit? <laughs> well, you know, I was, trying to, I was trying to paint a cool picture. When you're doing it. When that you're was doing not a, a cool picture. No, that I'm was trying a, to paint a cool picture of, uh, about how men had to sacrifice by being you know, the whipping boys. You don't see too many whipping yeah. girls in radio. We need to commission an artist to paint you hanging by your own pubes oh, I had a, with yeah. a microphone in your hand. Oh, jeez. No. I was going to say, yeah, the uh, carpet really doesn't match the drapes there. Uh, you don't know you about don't my know. carpet or drapes. How would you know about because that? Because if you're hanging from your pubes, obviously it's not those little whiskers you got on your head. Okay, that just got awkward. It got really weird. <laughs> yeah. yeah, I'm going to go gonna back to selling your panties. Yeah, 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 Thank yeah. you. All right. <laughs> Jesus. My eBay name is... Okay. Yeah, there we go. Well, you know what? Things have changed, though, guys. Oh, Scuba Steve texted in. Yeah. He's got a question for you. My wife just surprised me with a bucket list trip for my birthday. I'm going to Boston to watch the Mariners and Red Sox oh, to get out awesome. at Fenway. That's awesome. What are some Boston experiences I need to do when I'm there? Well, dude, honestly, make sure you get to the game early and hit all the spots around Fenway Park. It yep. is an awesome place to pre-funk. I mean, it's old town baseball, that feel around Fenway. And if you're only going to one game and you have the opportunity to be there for multiple nights, which I'm assuming you would, I don't think you're going to go for one day to Boston, post up at that bar that's attached to the outfield of yes. Fenway Park. and center field. Yeah. Yes, the, where that garage, there's a big garage door, and they open that garage door up at the bar before the game so you can see out onto the field from this bar. I hope it's still there, Steve, that bar. That'd be stupid if it isn't. That place was packed. I know. It was, it was incredibly, but I, it's been a while. Has it been 10 years since we've been there at yeah, that bar? Yeah. That's a good point. Faneuil Hall is a good place. The Liberty Trail is a good place. Uh, anywhere in the north end is the Italian section. You, you, yes. can, you can trip and fall into a great Italian restaurant in Boston. Uh, and the good news is their subway system takes you to pretty much anywhere of those spots I'm telling you about. Uh, the old buildings in the Faneuil Hall area are ridiculous. Uh, people love Quincy Market. There you go. You got it all. Boom. It's the second person. There's another our buddy Ty in Hawaii is going to Boston. Like maybe to see the same series. Huh. Yeah. Well, maybe you could catch a uh, Bruins game while, while there. Ooh, yeah. Or at least hang out by the garden or the garden. And it might be, I mean, it's a historical time. Because as far as we know, we haven't done the research, but the Bruins right now are at least looking like, at least by record, the best team in the NHL. Yeah. So uh, it could be... It could be back to back to back championships: Patriot, Red Sox, Patriots, Bruins in a row. I don't think that's ever been done in sports. And let's not forget who the WWE champion is: Kofi Kingston, who's okay. from Boston. There we go. Also, All right. who's the Ring of Honor wrestling champion? Matt Taven, yeah. also from Boston. Yeah, unfortunately, the Celtics not looking good right now. Well, you know what? Yeah, 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 that is, yeah sorry, sorry about that, Boston. Yeah, they're about to get their asses handed to them in the next game against the Bucks. I think. Yeah. So listeners on the loose, you pick the topic, you guide the show, but you know what? Now it's time for even a bigger issue to be discussed, okay? You're shutting down the door. We're opening it to Ryan Castle because we got to find out this. What do Ryan Castle and Crocs have in common? I'm going to tell you at 949 on The Rock. BJ and Migs, mornings on The Rock. 99.9 KISW. He's the drunk in charge. Now, the Ryan Castle question of the day. What do Ryan Castle and Crocs have in common? Uh, there's a Gorgonzola tang to them. Mmm, <laughs> yes. Yeah. It's a, oh. It's a, it's a footy nose about it. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Somebody says they both make your feet feel great. Yeah, they do. It makes your refers to strapless ones in camouflage. Oh, okay. And you can find both in the Reverend Infuego's closet. Hey, Truth. I mean. Yeah. Uh, Ryan. Speaking of things that smell funny. Yeah. Hey! Is Rev only one that rocks Crocs here? Yep. Yeah. Yeah, probably. Um, you don't rock Crocs. Yeah, you do. 
don't know if you guys have seen this new viral video challenge with people now. What they're doing is they're filling up their Crocs with shaving cream, then jamming their feet in so that you uh, <laughs> to see tubes of shaving cream exploding out of the, the hole. Please do it, Rev. Wow. Okay, honestly, this is the only reason why you should own Crocs. This is pretty freaking funny. I'm going to try it with Velveeta. Watch it. Boom. And out. Oh, it's pretty okay. great. I'm sure that's what Al Gore had in mind when he invented the internet. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. It's very satisfying. Oh, see, Vicky's going to do this. I'll have Crocs. Take right. the revs. No, it's time yeah, to you can borrow them. mine. No. I'll, I'll loan you $7 for a pair of Crocs. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Right, Castle, he's up next. He's got your morning 12 back. DJ and Miggs play of the day. Please welcome to the show one of Seattle's best, Rain Wilson. Welcome back to the show, Rain. By the way, is this Steve or BJ? Uh, that this is, is BJ. And? And I'm Steve. There you go. Okay, so BJ sounds like a drunk old hound dog. <laughs> Really, he I sounds <laughs> like like a relatively normal, uh, albeit emasculated male. Uh, you, you've really targeted the show. DJ and Migs mornings on the Rock ninety nine point nine KISW. Today's podcast was brought to you by Travis Gagne, bankruptcy attorney. Here's another question from a listener. If I file for bankruptcy, do I have to appear in court? That makes me nervous. Going to court is never something something that's easy to do. However, when you file bankruptcy, you usually only have to attend one hearing at the courthouse. Of course, I'll be there with you. And when you go to court, it's not before the judge. It's actually with the trustee or the trustee's attorney. One of the, one of the things that's, that's critical in a bankruptcy is that you give your attorney and the court all of, the, all of your information. You list all of your assets and all of your creditors. That's what we're trading for your discharge is your true and honest uh, disclosure of your assets and liabilities. And so the court hearing is just usually about a five-minute deal where you show up and, and reaffirm and, and swear that all the information you've given the court and your attorney is correct. Thanks, Travis. If you have more questions about bankruptcy, you can reach out to Travis anytime at choosetherightchapter.com. That's choosetherightchapter.com. Thanks for listening.